Hello, seniors. It's been a while, and I'm glad to see you all again. Another journey is yet to overcome. Let's step ahead in learning another exciting area of science that concerned with the study of inanimate natural objects, including physics, chemistry, astronomy, and related subjects. Students, it's time to learn physical science. Our lesson today is Intermolecular Forces and Properties of Substances. At the end of this module, you should be able to describe the types of intermolecular forces present in substances, identify the types of intermolecular forces present between and among substances, and explain the effects of intermolecular forces on the properties of substances. Intermolecular forces enable molecules to stick or attract to each other. That is why they are also called intermolecular forces of attraction. They are different from intramolecular forces which are attractions among atoms within a molecule. Generally, intermolecular forces vary in strength depending on the type of force that exists. These forces are dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding, and London dispersion. The presence of these forces among molecules results in a difference in the physical properties of molecules or substances. Dipole-dipole force occurs in polar molecules. Recall that a polar molecule creates a permanent dipole moment as a result of having a highly electronegative atom bonded with a less electronegative atom. Take hydrogen chloride as an example. Chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. Thus, chlorine strongly attracts the lone electron of hydrogen towards it, making one end of the molecule partially negative while one end is partially positive. How do hydrogen chloride molecules interact with other hydrogen chloride molecules? Well, with the presence of other polar molecules like hydrogen chloride, the partially positive end of the molecule is attracted to the partially negative side of another molecule. This attraction between two dipole molecules results in dipole-dipole force as represented by dotted lines. Have you ever wondered why water exists as solid, liquid, or gas? This important characteristic of water is a result of its ability to form hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. Hydrogen bonding is a special type of dipole-dipole attraction between molecules, not a covalent bond to hydrogen atom. It results from the attractive force between a hydrogen atom covalently bonded to a very electronegative atom, such as a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atom, and another very electronegative atom. How is hydrogen bonding different from the dipole-dipole force? Consider water molecule as represented in this figure. The bonding of oxygen atom, which is highly electronegative, and the hydrogen atom, which is least electronegative, in a water molecule creates an exceptionally strong dipole-dipole force. The hydrogen of one molecule is attracted to the oxygen atom of another water molecule. This attraction, which is essentially made up of hydrogen, is hence called the hydrogen bond. The unique ability of water to form a hydrogen bond with other water molecules makes it very important for the survival of organisms here on Earth. The electrons of an atom in a molecule is constantly moving. However, there are times when electrons move to one end, making such end partially negative, while the other end becomes partially positive. This uneven distribution of electrons results in temporary dipole in a molecule. The temporary dipole induces instantaneous dipoles on neighboring molecules. London dispersion force is a weak intermolecular force between two atoms or molecules in close proximity to each other. 
London Voices The force gets its name because Fritz London first explained how noble gas atoms could be attracted to each other in 1930. His explanation was based on the second-order perturbation theory. The London forces, or the LDF, are also known as dispersion forces, instantaneous dipole forces, or induced dipole forces. London dispersion forces may sometimes be loosely referred to as Van der Waals forces. What makes solid, liquid, and gas molecules in such forms? And why substances have the phase they are in? And what happens to alcohol when exposed to air? How is it possible to solidify and liquefy gases? And what about a bag of water in the freezer overnight? Well, these are basic phases in the transitions in a mother that are observable around us even at home. You can examine under certain situations that liquids may exhibit viscosity, a resistance to flow naturally. Water as liquid may also develop a skin on its surface, as observed in liquid droplets and light objects resting on its surface. On the other hand, solids cannot be expected to flow due to its rigidity as affected by stronger intermolecular forces between its molecules. Moreover, certain conditions allow substances to transform and alter from one form to another. But the rate and how they change from one phase to another, as well as how they mix with other substances, are governed largely by the strength that attracts their molecules together against the forces within the particles. In practical chemistry, for a substance to be useful, one has to alter the phase of matter so it could be combined with other substances under physical or chemical reaction, or let alone merely changing phase could make certain substances more useful, even without combining with other substances. In a condensed state, like solid or liquid, it is expected that the strength of intermolecular force is greater than in an and condensed form or gaseous, where kinetic energy is higher or faster. The IMF or intermolecular force in a molecule has to be broken for a transition to take place. With strong IMF and low energy within molecules, substance tends to be in solid or liquid form. On the contrary, with high energy within molecules, matter tends to be in gaseous form. The magnitude of energy is mostly determined by the temperature establishing a stable phase under certain conditions. Let us examine further the link between the physical properties like boiling point and melting point to strengths of intermolecular forces. Oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen are diatomic molecules without permanent dipoles when existing independently. Their high kinetic energy causes intermolecular forces between them very weak. This weak and temporary force you learned from the previous module refers to London dispersion forces and is the only force present in these atmospheric gaseous molecules at room temperature. Although London dispersion forces are relatively weak, they become very significant when molecules and atoms are very close. As atoms and molecules get bigger and heavier, the strength of London dispersion between them increases. In other words, the strength of London dispersion forces is stronger with increasing molecular mass as well as its melting and boiling points. On the other hand, the effect of dipole-dipole attraction is significant when we compare the properties of a polar molecule against a nonpolar molecule. Take hydrogen chloride and nonpolar molecule fluorine as examples. If they will be subjected at a temperature of 150 Kelvin, molecules of both substances would have the same average kinetic energy. 
It can be deduced that the strength of dipole-dipole attractions between hydrogen chloride molecules is greater compared to the attractions between nonpolar fluorine molecules. The former exhibits a higher normal boiling point of 188 Kelvin compared to 85 Kelvin to that of the latter. Thus, in terms of IMF and boiling point, hydrogen chloride is greater than fluorine. Special dipole-dipole interaction between molecules happens when hydrogen interacts to a highly electronegative atom, such as nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. The polar molecule with such hydrogen and electronegative atom would have the strongest van der Waals forces, called hydrogen band. Though not as strong as a covalent bond and not a real bond itself, hydrogen bond is strong enough to influence the physical properties of molecules. Water in particular exhibits hydrogen bond and consists of polar molecules. Because of its polarity, water displays some distinctive properties uncommon to most substances. High surface tension, high boiling point, and low density are the unique physical properties of water that set it apart from other molecules. The hydrogen bond between water molecules are evenly pulled at all sides in any vessel. While on its surface, water molecules are pulled inwards, creating the so-called surface tension. This allows small insects and light objects to walk and remain on its surface respectively. Hydrogen bonding also plays a significant role in the structure and function of several and most biological molecules, particularly in nucleic acids and proteins. The type of intermolecular forces that exist between atoms of molecules and some ions significantly influence the physical properties of substances. Generally, the degree of increasing strength of intermolecular forces is as follows. London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole interactions, and lastly, hydrogen bonding. Additionally, all molecules, however, possess the slightest attraction, which is LDF, or London dispersion forces, and would vary depending on the polarity. Substances that are nonpolar and exhibit London dispersion forces commonly exist in gaseous and liquid forms. They have considerably low boiling points compared to other substances. Water, on the other hand, exhibits special properties such as high boiling point, high surface tension, and high density. These are all attributed to hydrogen bonds present in water molecules, one of the vital molecules of living things. It is important to note that hydrogen bonds play a crucial role in maintaining configurations and shapes of important biomolecules such as nucleic acids and proteins. Molecules that constitute a wide range of compounds in three basic forms are fashioned based on the strength of force connecting each other by the so-called intermolecular forces. Similarly, these very distinctive properties, especially their behavior to external forces, are dictated and influenced by the intermolecular forces that hold the molecular design and unique characteristics of compounds distinct from one another. That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of physical science and I really hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thank you and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.